All right, so now um, a repeat panelist for us because we love her so much. Algelin Sperber is going to talk to us about how to, you know, pivot online, not necessarily with Patreon, but what else we need to consider. Thank you. And you're on. Thanks for having me. Um, so I am Algelin Sperber, CEO and founder of Ladybox. I also do um, freelance marketing consulting. Um, but uh, anyway, so that's where my background in being able to recalibrate businesses and um, comes in. So we're going to talk about recalibrating your business for success. And it's going to be very high level because really you can only recalibrate your business based off of your own business. And that's something that really takes time to do internally. So I'll keep this very high level. And then at the end of the presentation, I make a special offer for anybody that wants a, a step into how to recalibrate their business. So before we get into this, um, I want people to remember that because just because we are still in some phase of lockdown, it doesn't mean that your business has to be in lockdown. You can still make a pivot, make do recalibration, you can make changes. And because changes can be scary, don't let that discomfort overwhelm you. Um, lean into that discomfort a little bit, write things down and understand why you're feeling uncomfortable, and then take the time to make the pivots. And you can do like very baby steps with these. So we're gonna mainly talk about how to meet your customers where they are, automate your marketing, very, very high level on this. I'm going to talk about tools that you can use and then determine if your business needs a subscription model. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but we'll go through those steps and Mara actually went through some of them, um, the key questions that you need to ask yourself if you can and should do a, a subscription model. So let's talk about setting yourself up online. Um, if you don't have a website, I do encourage you to have one set up and there's tools out there that makes it easy to set up online. Um, WordPress and Squarespace are great ones for B2B businesses if you need to set something up on your own. Uh, maybe you're a solopreneur or you're a smaller firm um, and you need to get online. WordPress and Squarespace are a great way to do it. They walk you through the steps on um, what to do. The user interface in the background is very easy and simple to follow. Um, you'll see here Wix and Gumroad are in the middle between B2B and B2C. Um, so Wix and Gumroad are in the middle for a reason because you can use them for both. Wix is super easy to set up for a B2B, like maybe you have professional services, you have a marketing agency, you have a, an accounting agency or firm. And then Gumroad is, what, is a great one to use if you are creative. So pretty similar to Patreon. Um, and then uh, for B to C, oh, that's, I was going to give an example of who uses Gumroad. Um, Libro FM, who's a member of Ive Coworks, they use Gumroad and they love it. Um, so if you have something where you can have a subscription base and you have a creative component to it, Gumroad is a good one to use. B to C, um, e-commerce platforms, Lightspeed. So if you were already set up on Square and um, you had a, a a brick and mortar shop, maybe in downtown Bullsville or Bremerton. Lightspeed is a great one to use. It's already integrated with Square. I know the downtown shop Flicka uses Lightspeed because it's already integrated with that. Shopify and WooCommerce are the most popular e-commerce platforms to use. They're again super easy to utilize and follow. They Square, Shopify actually, when you set up, they say take these steps, and it's one, two, three. So very easy to follow. So figure out which platform is gonna be the best for you to use. All of these have some kind of analytics in the back end, which is going to be very important for you to have so you know if your company is generating revenue, what kind of traffic you're getting to your website, how long is the traffic staying on your website, where are they going on your website? So having those analytics is important and all of these provide that. 
And I see questions coming in um, or comments, and we'll get to those at the end. All right, so let's talk about which CRM, customer relationship management platform, is best for your business. Um, so customer relation, relationship management, that's part of the automation part of things. So it's important to have this so that you can track where your customers or clients are coming from and what kind of behaviors or activities they're doing to engage with your company. There's really popular ones like Salesforce and HubSpot and Klaviyo. HubSpot is awesome for B2B types of businesses. Um, so if you have professional services, that's a great one to utilize. Um, they have a free um, or freemium version that you can use. And what you want to use these for is setting up a way to capture contact information from people visiting your website because it's different from people going to your office or going to your store. You have that face-to-face -face interaction where you can collect some kind of information. Um, but with a website, that's still a storefront. So you need a way to capture contact information in a way. So HubSpot, Salesforce, and Klaviyo make it easy to do that. The other e-commerce sites that I mentioned before, they also do that too. Um, HubSpot and Salesforce, Salesforce also make it easier for B2B service, um, businesses to qualify the leads that you have come in. So then that way you can you know, have it set to cold leads or you know, people that could sign on in the next six months or um, you know, hot leads can sign on in the next 30 days. You want to have some kind of CRM platform that can help you manage that and automate things. And I'll get into that a little deeper in a second. Klaviyo, this is a little bit more advanced for e-commerce, but it's going to be so helpful in scoring the customers that come in. And that's kind of a weird term to use, scoring. But you want to be able to give certain customers a score um, because of the lifetime value that they can create. Um, because if they have a lot higher lifetime value, they're more likely to come back and they're spending more money with you and they are going to spread the word about your business. So the more tailored that you can get with anything that you provide people in terms of content, the higher propensity that they're going to have to come back to you and spend money with you. What if I need a CRM light? Because all those like big, like Salesforce and HubSpot and Klaviyo sound very overwhelming. That's totally normal. Um, if you can't have somebody that has experience in marketing or setting up automation help you with that, there's a CRM light version that you can utilize. And that's even just using um, Shopify's automation that gets set up. Squarespace has um, options to set up automation and some kind of CRM. So that's a helpful way. MailChimp, if you are using MailChimp, you can set up automation that way. You can capture email addresses, um, even phone numbers. You can set up a welcome email for people um, and a whole drip campaign and welcome series and uh, automation series to engage your customers. And again, these tools will walk you through that whole setup. And for the most part, their chat function for customer service is very helpful. You can track old school on paper with or on an Excel doc. You can still do that. It's not as efficient as a customer relationship management platform, but you can still do that and it can still work and benefit you. Um, just do what's gonna feel the most comfortable, but still push you outside of your comfort zone so that you can be where your customers are and that you can tailor any content that you deliver to them based off of them. Why do I even need this? So we know about the sales funnel. <laughs> That's why you need a CRM platform and automation. You need a way to make it so that people can find out about you, discover you, look through your website and figure out what they wanna buy from you. Um, and then all the way down to loyalty. Loyalty, because you have, the majority of you business owners have such loyal customers, a loyal customer base, 
they want to help you. So if you can set up a customer relationship with them using online tools, they're going to have a high propensity to come back to you and even promote your business even more. How do I meet my customers where they're already at? Online, especially. You may be used to having your office and your storefront, um, your physical location. So now you have to figure out a way to meet them where they're at right now. The majority of people right now are on social media. I think there was like an 80% lift in engagement on Facebook and Instagram alone. Um, and if uh, any of you have teenagers in your house, you've probably been seeing them post a lot on uh, TikTok lately. So you just figure out where your customers are right now. Are they on LinkedIn right now? Um, are they on Reddit? Are they listening to podcasts? If they're listening to podcasts and the radio, find an opportunity to introduce yourself to those podcast hosts or producers and connect with them on a story that you can share with their audience so that you can reach your customers that way. Video is a great way. Um, Google loves videos. If you've heard anything about Google search algorithms, they favor videos highly. So if you have a YouTube account or you don't, set one up, it's super free, free. <laughs> and um, start posting some videos. They don't have to be highly produced. And if you have older videos, you can upload those, <clears throat> add some keywords on there that can help people find you like your brand name what you do and um where they can find you online www.yourbusiness.com um and that's going to be a great way for people to find you online you can also do digital marketing ads like google ads um, but that's kind of getting into the weeds but those are some options of being able to find where your customers are and meet them there don't expect them to just find you willy-nilly you need to meet them where they're at. If that's on social media, if that's on podcasts, if that's on TV, find ways. There's, um, there's some easy ways to find them. Social media is going to be the easiest one. That's where a lot of people are engaged right now. So should I set up a subscription model for my business? Here are some questions to ask yourself. Do you have a product that can be replenished on a regular basis? Like toothbrush, period products, uh, household cleaners. Can your product be offered as a kit? Do you, have a, do you have content or service that can be purchased on a recurring basis? So think of like, um, like a, an accountant or a, is there anything that you can fit into some kind of recurring business model to help you have that revenue stream? If you can, set it up. There's um, different tools that you can use, like Bold Commerce can help you uh, integrate into Shopify if you have a, a physical product to sell that can be a, a, a part of a subscription. Um, and then other apps and tools that I'm not as familiar with for um, online subscriptions, like services, but there are tools out there for that. Then here's a recalibration checklist. Um, I don't know that I have enough time to go through this full thing, but it will be available online after the webinar. But here are some questions to ask yourself and then even figuring out how to recalibrate. Ask your customers where they're at, what they need, um, and recalibrate based off of that. Don't recalibrate just based off of what you think it should be. You need to ask your customers. Um, and then list out what's working for you and then scrap anything that's not. Identify tools that are going to be helpful for you in recalibrating. Um, and then the most important one, well, the second most important one, the most important one is asking customers what they need. The second one is coming up with a 30, 60, 90 day plan. You can't roll everything out in a week or two weeks even. You need a 90 day plan at least to be able to really recalibrate your business. Um, but you need to take actions right now to start that recalibration. <laughs> and having the right people on your team to help you with that is very key too. Assign the roles based off of people's strengths and skill sets. 
I know this is, you know, having to go online for some people is something new. Um, but push yourself and just lean into that discomfort and do it. Mara did it and she's doing a great job with it. I'm super excited for her and many other businesses have been doing it um, since we've had to be on lockdown and quarantine. And it's been great, great to see. One example is that uh, Indigo Plum um, last night, they usually have their first, their annual girls night out in person and they weren't going to do anything, but then they shifted to, I'll just make it virtual. And then they still had revenue come in. So there's an opportunity if you can look for it. So if you would like to connect with me for a free 30 minute consultation on how to recalibrate, um, you can email me. That's an offer that I'm making right now. Um, and we'll make it best, uh, help you make sure that it's best fit to your client and customers. And that's all. Okay. So there is a question. Um, somebody asked what platform is best for being able to capture all touches and copies of materials sent to potential clients? I favor HubSpot on that one, um, but just base it off of, I, I wouldn't be able to really answer that not knowing your full business, but HubSpot is my favorite. Okay. I used to uh, use it at my old agency, marketing agency. Okay. And you touched on analytics a bit with the CRMs and, you know, all the social media platforms mm -hmm. have analytics as well. Is there something in particular you look for when you're reviewing those? It's entirely based off of the business's goals and, and model. So if, for example, a marketing agency, I looked at how people were finding us outside of, you know, referrals and word of mouth and what services that they seemed the most interested in. For my own business right now, for Ladybox, I look at how people are finding me, how long they're staying um, as subscribers, what the average order value is. Um, there's tons of metrics that I take a look at and KPIs that I stick to and follow, but it's entirely based off of your business model and your goals. So, they definitely need to have all those pieces in place before they just start throwing yeah. things out there. Yeah, the three quick, three key questions always to ask yourself as a business owner or operator, where am I at? Where do I need to be? How am I gonna get there? 